Welcome to the Rachel Varga Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Varga, double board certified aesthetic nurse specialist since 2011 with over 20,000 rejuvenation procedures performed. I'm an international clinical trainer for other physicians and nurses as well, celebrity skin expert, having been featured on some of the world's top proactive aging podcasts and much, much more. Learn more at rachelvarga.ca and enjoy today's episode. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to today's episode on the newly rebranded The School of Radiance podcast. Today we are discussing how to be inspired, how to be an inspired and radiant human with Dr. Melissa Saunders, host of the Be Inspired Mama podcast. Let me tell you a little bit about today's guest who I had the pleasure of meeting in person at a women's health event in Sarasota recently, and she was shining on stage and just totally clicked with Dr. Melissa Saunders. She's the host of the Be Inspired Mama podcast, a community for women who want to transform struggles into victories by taking action. She has extensive training in prenatal, postpartum, and pediatric care. Melissa shares the latest research with parents and children who are pursuing healthy lifestyles and navigating the complex demands of balancing it all. She completed the Functional Neurology Childhood Development course through the Carrick Institute and is one of only 52 professionals who earned her diploma in chiropractic pediatrics from the Academy of Family Practice in North America. Self-care took on new importance for her when she became a parent and then again when she experienced health challenges. Melissa was diagnosed in 2017 with a neurological form of Lyme's disease and meningitis with encephalitis. She considers Lyme's disease one of her greatest gifts since it forced her to put herself closer to the top of her daily to-do list. She enjoys speaking and teaching about self-care to inspire other women to prioritize their needs. Melissa is the co-founder of Core Therapies Family Wellness Center in Northern New Jersey, a holistic practice with chiropractors whose specialties include functional neurology, functional medicine, hyperbaric oxygen, prenatal, postpartum, pediatric, and sports injuries. Core therapies also offer acupuncture, massage, spinal decompression, yoga, and laser therapies. She's also the co-founder of HBOT USA, an international company dedicated to giving people access to the best equipment, education, and implementation of hyperbaric oxygen therapy, which you all know I'm a huge fan of. She's also the co-founder of NJHBOT, as well as HFM, Hyperbaric and Functional Medicine, in Newtown Square, Pennsylvania. Get to know her and what she's all about over at BeInspiredMama.com. Welcome, 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 Dr. Melissa Saunders. How are you today? Hi, Rachel. I'm so good. Thanks for having me. Yes, it's, it's, it was great to meet you in person. And now online, we are reconnecting and we're going to have a great conversation. Mm-hmm. So as you know, my angle is all about radiance. And when I saw you on stage, it was very clear to me that you are a beautiful, radiant woman who is really living her life's passion. And you come across as a very well-balanced woman, also being a mother of a few children. And so I want to know what you're doing behind the scenes. I can tell you definitely are a very balanced human. Well, first of all, what does radiance mean to you? I'm always curious what people think of this word or radiance. What does it mean to you? Yes. Before I answer that, I just have to start by saying I'm not balanced. I think balance is BS. I think I resonate better with harmony and I do my best to live harmoniously because I think, I don't know, I just feel like trying to be balanced in my mind set me up for failure. Like it's, it's a juggle I think we're all working on it all the time. I'm not going to pretend to have my stuff together because I don't. And I think when we can all stand up and be vulnerable and share that, um, we form the collective community that we all need and deserve as women. So I'll start off by saying that. I'm definitely not balanced. Well, that that is <laughs> what someone who is maybe potentially more balanced than most people would actually say. So <laughs> thank you. I mean, I do a lot of work on myself and I know we'll talk about that. I think that's really important. So, you know, getting back to answering your question, what does radiance mean to me? Radiance is, you know, having an inner light. And in order to do that, I know that we need to spend time connecting with ourselves and being present with ourselves and grounding ourselves. 
And when we can do that as women and especially as moms or, you know, partners, uh, sisters, daughters, wives, all the million roles that we play, we can be so much more present with those around us. Um, it's we stay grounded through the turmoil, through everything that we're juggling. Um, I think, you know, rushing women is a really accurate terminology for the way that most of us live these days. I think we're, you know, I read this quote the other day that I really resonated with. It was like, women today were raised in traditional gender roles, while also being empowered to be independent and have our own careers. And so now you've got this generation of women where we're, we're doing a lot of it on our own, right? We're juggling the household and having these high power careers. And it's a lot. And so again, to, to try to say that, you know, any of us are doing it in perfect balance is, is just not accurate. But I do know that when we're doing it from a place of taking care of ourselves and taking time for ourselves and being present with ourselves, we can do it from a grounded, harmonious um, place. Very eloquently stated, Melissa. And I completely hear you on this busy men and women, right? How many times you meet somebody and, or you greet them and you say, how are you? And they say, I'm busy. What is that supposed to be a badge of honor that you're so busy? Right? Yeah. yeah. I'm reading. I, I know we'll talk about books later because I love books, but I just got this new book and it's the it's something about hurry in the name, the ruthless elimination of hurry or something like that. And he talks about that. He's like, think of the most common greeting people say, you know, how are you? It's I'm good. I'm busy. Like, why have we all gotten to that point? And I think it's it's part of the cause of and, you know, the solution to the problem is we've lost connection with ourselves. And, you know, whether it's conscious pat patterns or subconscious patterns, this hurry that we all have is, you know, I feel like it's a major disconnect. It's a disconnect from source. It's a disconnect from ourselves. And I think it takes some inward reflection in order to commit to, you know, going deeper with yourself, spending time with yourself. Cause it, the reality is, is it can be scary, right? It can be scary to spend time alone, to actually hear the voice and what's, what's coming up. So I think a lot of us create busyness in our businesses to avoid that. Um, and so, you know, that's a really long winded comment on what you just said about hurry. But I think that that all fits under the realm for me of, you know, radiance and shining our light stems from being able to slow that down and get centered, connect with our source, connect with ourselves. Absolutely. After being in two car crashes, this is something that became very apparent to me. Because with recovery, I was in a lot of pain. The nervous system was totally dysregulated. That's why I did just a ton of cold therapy to tone that vagus nerve and to master my stress response. And it forced me to slow down because I was on this jet set trajectory of, you know, flying over here, going to this event, that event all the time. It was totally this, you know, super fantastic jet set lifestyle, taking helicopters all the time, super mm -hmm. fun. And it's like, you know what? No, that's not when you know you've made it. When you know you've made it is actually when you can have more boundaries around the hours that you work and also taking the time to be in your own thoughts, to connect spiritually, to spend time with the divine, remember who you are and what you're here to do. And of course, spend time with family. Mm -hmm. And when we have all those aspects of ourselves balanced, that's when we're going to be in our most radiant state. So I feel more beautiful and radiant now living a more slow lifestyle, more time in prayer and meditation and actually doing way less rejuvenation than I used to versus, you know, doing a ton of different rejuvenation procedures, jet set lifestyle. I look way healthier now, especially with, with biohacking as well. It makes a huge difference in a, with the way that we look and also the energy that we have and the more clarity we have with our intuition. Mm-hmm. Well, there's, you know, there's a high that I think comes with that lifestyle and it gets addicting. You know, I've lived the busy lifestyle. I still dabble in it for sure. Um, I enjoy it. It's a dopamine rush like no other. But just like you said, you know, it's it definitely ages us. I think you spend a lot of time living in fight or flight and then almost like an emptiness when you settle in and get home, whereas 
you know, when you sit for a longer amount of time, when you kind of slow down your schedule, you get rid of some of that hurry. Like for me, whenever I have to dip back into that, there's a little bit of like a detox effect. Like it's, it's hard for me, right? It's, I, I crave that, that fight or flight. I crave that adrenaline. I crave that coffee, whatever it is to get that feeling. Um, but when I can get over that hump and really connect with myself, and I know we'll talk about magical mornings, like that's one of my biggest grounding rituals for when I come back. Um, that's, that's the easiest gateway for me to get back into, I don't need the high from the adrenaline, um, you know, travel stuff that I get such a high from the connection that you can create with yourself. Well, and so I get, I, and connection with others. I mean, I get a high from that too, like connecting with beautiful souls like yourself and going to events, especially when they're health focused. Mm-hmm. And like you, you get to connect with your tribe. I told you, I totally hear you on detoxing after traveling, the brain actually goes through a little bit of atrophy and you get a bit of brain damage every time you fly and get up to altitude. So that's why I really love tech, like the brain tap technology by Patrick Porter. He actually showed some brain scans before and after a flight. So I take that when I fly and I'll do like a couple, I'll do a couple sessions while I'm in the air. And who cares if people think I'm weird with, you know, this thing over my eyes and flashing lights, and my EMF hoodie. It's all good. I get off that plane feeling great. Totally. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and you know, too, the, the flights are low oxygen environment. So like one of the things that that I've worked into travel is, you know, ideally getting in a rental car, if we have to go somewhere instead of an Uber and windows down, arriving, grounding, spending time in nature, getting outside, of course, hyperbaric oxygen therapy. I mean, I know you love that as well. Our company is literally built around it. Um, But all those things are really important. And you know, carving out that time and space on either end of it for like what I like to call re-entry. You know, it's so interesting, the timing of our interview, because I'm just coming back from summer. We were away for eight weeks. We were back in our previous hometown of New Jersey. And I completely fell off like my normal ritual, you know, the grounding routine that we all have when we're in our home. And I've gotten little dips of that when we travel. But this was like, I feel like I got knocked off my rocker. And so I've just kind of crawled back out and gotten to my, to my regular, you know, feeling like myself. And it was really cool, Rachel, because I think what happened is I got to step in and live in the life that I think a lot of women are currently living in, where we're just running around, we're doing all the things, we're either, you know, feeding the kids or running to our job or putting them where they need to be, coming home doing the duties of the house, having very little time or space for ourselves. And so it was really cool because it showed me, you know, thankfully how far I've come and what has made me feel like more of a balanced, harmonious human. And it's, it's so simple. It's not easy, but it's so simple to, you know, we can literally like follow steps to get back to us. For me, the steps are the things I do in the morning. They're reading incredible books that help me, you know, be present and connect, um, books that inspire me, things that elevate me and, um, you know, help keep me on track with my health, whether that's about like brain optimization and biohacking or, you know, great stories like um, I love Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. His his stuff is so good. Beautiful. Well, I want to hear all about your magical mornings. I call the morning the AM because I don't want to, you know, mourn the mornings kind of thing. But the AM is honestly my most sacred time. And I've been getting up so much more early. I I get up at about 6 a.m. now. Mm-hmm. And I go to bed at, I don't know, like 8 or 9 o'clock. You go to bed really early too. <laughs> yeah, I need just a ton of sleep right now in my stage of the game. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, the AM is is my most favorite time to connect with myself and the divine, have my prayers, have the intention set for the day. It's a huge part of being radiant, in my opinion. But tell us about your magical mornings. I know this is one of your areas of specialty. What does your routine look like? Yes. And I never thought about that, that it's called morning. I never thought about that. Thank yeah, you. I study, I study a lot of linguistics and it's a huge part of what I do so that I can be a better communicator. And this is a huge part of the School of Radiance membership is how we can have better communication as well as etiquette in our conversational etiquette, in our dining etiquette. How do we read people better? And mm-hmm. how can we connect and communicate with ourselves and others better? So 
I don't say words like amazing or wonderful or, or understand or mornings. There's like our words are spells, right? Our, our words are super powerful. So when you, when you understand, it's more like interesting. You don't want to under be understanding something. You want to be interested is yeah, right. linguistics is super cool. Oh, I have so many questions about that for another time. We'll definitely delve into that for sure. I'll have you on my podcast. Fabulous. Well, first of all, I want to hear more about your AM. My magical AMs. Okay, my magical AMs. So I, the mornings, the AMs, wow, that's hard to switch off. The AMs for me, and it sounds like you feel similarly, is just an incredible opportunity to um, create quiet space for myself before the day begins. And so there's basically a few steps that I go through each morning and I'm very intentional with, and they're um, so simple, can take five minutes. You can spend an hour on it, whatever you have space for. But basically, you know, our brains are in such a beautiful theta, you know, dreamlike state when we first wake. And for anyone who's not familiar with theta, theta is where a lot of our best ideas come. So like some people will say, you know, my best ideas come in the shower or my best ideas come on my AM commute to work. And the reason that is, is when we're doing those two things, the shower, the commute to work, we're not having to pay attention to what we're doing. We can just kind of go through the motions. I know you know this, um, but just sharing with your listeners. So our brain has the space to kind of like daydream. So that's what we're in in the morning. And so we have this opportunity to max out that brain space before, you know, slamming the caffeine, going into reactive mode. And so I really want to help people maximize that time because you can get so much out of it. So one of the first things I do is before I even open my eyes, you know, when you just start to kind of start to kind of wake up and usually instantly there's some subconscious thoughts that come up and you can really tune in um, and pay attention to what they're saying. So like for me, a lot of the times, if I'm being completely honest, there'll be things like, gosh, there's a lot to do today. How am I going to get the kids wherever they need to get? Blah, blah, blah. It's a lot of busyness. I tend to be a very like recovering fast paced person. I'm sure you can relate. Um, so it's a lot of busy action. So I will name that feeling. So say it's overwhelm. Then I'm going to think about what's, what's a word that might mean the opposite or what might actually feel better than overwhelm. Um, it might be something like fun. Like how can I, instead of feeling overwhelmed today, how can I have fun today? I'm still going to do all the things that I have to do. I'm still going to get everyone where they need to get, but I can make a choice in this moment to flip the feeling of overwhelm to fun. So then what I do from there is because of wonderful people like Dr. Joe Dispenza, his work is incredible. If anyone hasn't heard of it, I know that I have the ability to create whatever feeling I want inside of me. So I'll literally lay there until I can create a feeling of fun. So at the beginning, like when I wasn't familiar with this process, it would look like thinking of memories of, you know, really, really fun times and literally getting back in that moment, like reliving that moment until you get that feeling in your stomach. Um, so I lay there until I create the feeling. And then I also create somewhat of like a plan or a template. Like, okay, when I'm driving the kids to school this morning, instead of feeling overwhelmed, I'm going to feel fun. What would, what would a fun car ride look like? Okay. I'm going to take my husband's Bronco. We're going to put the windows down and we're going to blast music. Great. Check done. So I just start to weave I like, that. I like your style. I like that too. Like yeah. It's all yeah. lifted and badass looking. Oh, it's so it's so fun. Like, like let's go cruise the state park, whereas you know, an off-road. Yeah. Road and just any car, whatever car you have, if you put the windows down and you put fun music on, and it's if it's cold where you live or it's cold season, like crank the heat. It's just fun. It's so much more fun. Um, and so I just work to bring that energy into everything I'm doing that day. If I have a staff meeting before I get on the meeting. Instead of like looking at my notes, thinking about all the things like, okay, how can I make this more fun? Because whatever question we ask ourselves through the day, we're going to answer. I know you know this, Rachel, but a lot of the sub subconscious questions we ask ourselves are things like, how am I going to how am I going to get through this? Why do I have to do this? Like these victim like stressed mindsets, you can just flip it. Like we have that power in every single interaction we have. It completely changes the way our day feels. And like you said, like connections not only with ourselves are so important, but connections with everybody else. 
And you know how it feels when you're with someone who is connected to themselves. Think about checking out at the cashier at the grocery store. Like you can feel if that person's just going through the motion. Checked in or checked out, right? Yes, checked in or checked out. Like do, 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 do. Or are they like actually talking to you, looking at you? Yeah. There's the, there's one of the grocery stores in New Jersey we used to go to all the time, King's. There was this one woman's line that was always busy. All it was is she's present with everybody. She literally would connect with everybody. People want that. People crave that. And so when you can take that check-in time at the beginning of your day, set your intention, flip your day, come up with your powerful question that you're going to ask throughout the day, that's that's a huge step. And then from there, I literally go and I sit on our couch. I turn on a red light. I'm very particular about lights. Our house looks like a brothel. So like after sundown and before sunup, there's only red lights in our house. Some are great like sauna space, you know, these higher end amazing tools. And some are just literally red light bulbs from Amazon that cost $10. Like you can- With like a film over an LED. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like it doesn't, you don't have to spend a ton of money. Absolutely. The, you know, the the therapeutic ones are very important and very effective. Um, but so then after that, I sit in front of my red light and I get up early, just like you said, so that I have time for this. Like you're not going to miss half hour of sleep, but your day will completely change if you start from reacting rather than responding. We have three kids. They've all, they all join me at the beginning. You know, I would get somewhat resentful because I'm like, I need this time. I need this space to just sit in quiet. Um, but so the way I worked it with them is I made it really boring. Like I will snuggle with them, but I'm not, I'm not here to like play a game. I'm not here to answer questions. I'm very connected with my children, but they know that space is mine. Like that is where mama fills her cup. My eyes are usually closed. Sometimes I have headphones in, I'm listening to music or meditation. That's my time to really deeply connect with myself. I just sit. I have no intention other than to just sit. Um, whatever it is that comes up, I just sit through, I think through, but that's not when I'm doing like my to-do list, my emails, like none of that is allowed in that space. Yeah, I love that. So getting back to this uh, grocery store a checkout lady. So what this lady's got going on is she's basically emitting a certain frequency. And when I go to events, I have people come up to me all the time. They're like, hey, I just wanted to come up and talk to you. And it's this, it's this radiant energy. And this is what I love to teach people to cultivate because it's a great way to make friends. It's a great way to kind of quote unquote find the others. When your energy is right, you got these self-care practices down. Love that you're teaching your kids this as opposed to, you know, scrolling your phone on, phone on social media, which a lot of parents do. Mm-hmm. And then they're setting that example to their kids. Rather, they're seeing you meditate and doing self-care practices, which I just think is is really important because they're watching, right? They're, they're watching. Yeah. I Do they join you? They do. Yeah. So it's just part of, you know, it's, I also call it like our morning lounge. Like I just want them to know to start the day that way. So like the other day I came home from the gym and I walk in and like my red lights on, they're reading their books, they're laying down, like they, they're always watching. So whatever we do, they're going to do. Um, and I do, you know, I do scroll social media. Like I, I get lonely and I fall into the pattern of like this, this is connection quickly realize it's not. So I just try to be really intentional um, when I do hop on social media. Like, am I craving connection? Okay, what else can I actually do that's going to feel like connection? Because this isn't it. Am I just feeling like kind of, you know, having some blank space and scrolling? Fine. Okay, then let me set a timer. I'll go in for five minutes and then I'm out. Like, I just create intentional boundaries around those things. But I do, you know, I do enjoy social media. I think it's it's a fun way to connect and share especially with people like you that I, you know, I meet during travels and I don't get to always see. So I feel like we can do both. Yeah. Again, it's all about balance, right? There's always good, bad, light, dark, the woes of the world, great people doing great things. Just depends what you're putting your attention onto and having boundaries of not having things slip into your awareness and your energetics as well. That's why in the AM, not scrolling is so key. And one of the other things that I do is I don't have coffee within the first two hours of getting up anymore. I'll have hot water with lemon. My body isn't really wanting coffee right now as much anyways. However, if I feel like I need that little kick, I'll have a little bit and then I'll throw some 
Organifi and superfood and adaptogens in it. I love Organifi. Have you tried that stuff yet? Yes. Yeah. I love their stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, And I I agree. Products for years now. Oh, it's so good. I agree too. Like working on not having the caffeine right away. Um, I love just like a warm drink in the morning. I feel like drinks for whatever reason, help me be present. I'm not sure why that is. I'm working on that, but, um, you know, so for a while I would just make like a pour over decaf. There's something about the ritual for me. Uh, but one of the steps for my magical AMs (laughs) is to hydrate. And I think we need to sit and hydrate and also, you know, really ride out being in our parasympathetics part of our nervous system before you slam into that fight or flight, which coffee will do, you know? So yeah. And really I mean, I used to hit the ground running, right? Mm-hmm. Get out of bed too late. Then you're in this big hurry. Now I have much slower AMs. Love, love, love that cold shower in the AM to help tone that vagus nerve and, uh, you know, get that nervous system balanced. So I know you mentioned oxygen hyperbaric therapy, hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Love that stuff. I know you work a lot with that. You mentioned red light therapy. We talked about Organifi superfood and adaptogens. By the way, everybody, Organifi is the sponsor of today's episode. Head on over to Organifi.com forward slash Varga. Use promo code Varga and save 20%. And, you know, Melissa and I, we both use this stuff. It's fantastic. It's super tasty. Kids love it too, hey? Yeah, the green. I love the green ones. I love them all. So if you were to pick like your top three biohacks, what would they be? Mm, Red light. I love. So I usually do a morning sunrise walk. We are lucky to live now in Miami, two blocks from the water. So red light is definitely one of my favorites. I've noticed a huge impact on that in our lives. Um, Hyperbaric auction, obviously, I once we really got into it, we completely changed our lives to create um, awareness and education around it. So that's huge. And oh my gosh, so many. I think right now I would just have to say cold. Uh, It is summer and it's really hot where I live. I fluctuate between loving the cold and not loving the cold. I'm just north of you and and I live in Jupiter. Yes. Yes. So we're (laughs) Are we we like the only people driving around Florida with their windows open when it's like 90 to 100 degrees? Yeah. I I love the heat. I love love, Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, Florida, August. I'm like, my son checked the weather the other day. He's like, it feels like 105. I was like, yes. I love it. I don't love it when you, you know, you want your hair to look nice, but when you're like, oh, I got a, I got a super clean keratin smoothing treatment for that. Oh, that's amazing. From my e-store. I have like 250 pre-vetted products by me. Skincare, hair care, hair skin nail supplements. Check it out. It's all at the school of radiance.com. Okay. I'll, you up. I will. I'll send you what you need. I got what you need. I will. Thank you. <laughs> I'm like your beauty dealer. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I know you have a hard stop. And I would love for you to tell us a little bit about a little bit more about your beinspiredmama.com mornings resource and how people can learn more about your work. Yeah. So I have a free magical mornings challenge. Really got to rethink that. Are you going to change the name now? I don't know. It's like once you know, you can't unknow. I know. So right? many people don't like the mornings <laughs> anyway. So I got to think about that. But maybe just calling them magical mornings helps. Um, so I, I literally, I, like it. I literally walk people through super easy, uh, few step process to completely change your your day through changing your mornings. I literally just had to re go through it myself. It was it was really an incredible opportunity. Um, because I fell so far off and within like five days, I feel back to me. So people can click on, I know you're sharing the link right there. Um, mornings, there's no exclamation point on the actual link, but I'm sure people know that. And that's a free challenge. You'll get an email each day with a step for the next day. Each step can literally take you like two minutes, super quick, super easy. I have a podcast, uh, We'll be releasing one every week starting in the fall. And then I'm really, really excited about an online book club that I'm starting, 1111. Basically, the big goal with that is to create a community of connection with ourselves and one another by reading inspirational books together. We're going to go through a book a month, um, some of my absolute favorite titles and authors. And this is like one of those projects that's been in me brewing for quite a while. And I'm so ready and so pumped. So that'll start Uh, this November. Fabulous. Well, if you need some spiritual 
galactic soul tantra book recommendations so that's what i'm reading right now please email them to me yes and then i definitely want to have you on my platform too i want to do a linguistics yes yeah our word choice you know there's nothing worse than someone who invests time and money in their appearance and they open their mouth and you're like what Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You just went from like 10 according to social media to like a two. Ooh. Yeah. Right. There's not yeah. much going on upstairs or I, you know, don't have values that resonate with you just not simply based totally. on the way that you speak. Right. Totally. Mm-hmm. So okay. You can like basically undo thousands of dollars worth of rejuvenation if you open your mouth and you have terrible communication etiquette. Yeah. No, I would love to learn more about that. So I'm super yeah. pumped for that. I look forward to that. Um, I love, you know, I play a lot on Instagram. I just share kind of what I'm doing throughout each day to to stay inspired, to motivate myself, to take care of myself amidst job and kids. So you guys can follow me over there. That's kind of like where I play. And then the website, I know you shared, Rachel, that's where everything's housed. The podcast, some of my favorite products, which I know, Rachel, you've got a ton of those as well. Um, and any blogs and resources that I share. Fabulous. So beinspiredmama.com. And what's your Instagram handle? Uh, same. Be inspired mama. Fabulous. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Melissa Saunders, for joining us here on the newly rebranded School of Radiance podcast, talking all about how to be inspired, how to have a fantastic magical morning or AM, whichever words you choose. And I am so thrilled for each and every one of you who join Dr. Melissa Saunders and I here on today's show and learn more over at the school of radiance.com as well as check out the show notes of this episode for more resources and look forward to seeing you again right here on the school of radiance podcast. Thank you, Dr. Melissa Saunders. Thank you, Rachel.